Hello, my name is Flitus Poston, and I'd like to spend the next few minutes or so talking about the difference between risk and vulnerabilities. So first, we need to define what a risk is and what a vulnerability is. Risk is the potential threat or hazard that can cause harm or loss. Some characteristics that you need to look for is uncertainty, likelihood, impact, and consequences. An example of a risk would be a company's financial assets being stolen by a cyber attack. Next is vulnerability. It's a weakness or flaw in a system process or control that can be exploited by a threat. It's exposure to risk, lack of controls, inadequate policies, and or procedural gaps. A vulnerability would be an unpatched software that is vulnerable that allows an attacker to gain access to your company's systems. So the key differences here is a risk is not the same as a vulnerability. Risk involves uncertainty and potential impact, while vulnerability refers to the specific weakness or flaws in a system or process. Vulnerabilities can lead to risk. A vulnerability can be exploited by a threat, resulting in a risk to your organization's assets. Not all vulnerabilities are risk. Not every vulnerability will result in a risk, as it depends on the various factors, such as likelihood, and impact. We have a risk metrics that you can use, the likelihood of high and low and your impact of high and low. We'll discuss these more as we get deeper into the presentations. But a high-low metrics matrix, my apologies, can be used to help an organization evaluate the level of risk associated with particular vulnerability. If, the, if both the likelihood and impact are high, it's considered a critical risk. Thus, a company discovers an unpatched software vulnerability that allows attackers to gain access to their systems. If the likelihood is low, only 10% of exploitation, but the impact is high, a potential loss of a million dollars, it's still considered a moderate risk. Consequences are not understanding the differences. Ineffective risk management focuses on solely the vulnerability without considering the risk landscape which can lead to ineffective risk management. Ignoring vulnerabilities that are low risk but high impact can also result in missed opportunities for mitigation and control improvements. Not addressing vulnerabilities can increase your exposure to risk, potentially leading to more severe consequences. So for the purpose of this, let's focus on a quick overview of NIST 853. It provides a security framework to help organizations manage and reduce cyber risk. It applies to all federal agencies and other government entities, but can also be used by the private sector. Classifying your organization's data and systems are based on its potential impact to national security or to the organization's security. By choosing specific controls from NIST 853 to implement in order to re reduce and mitigate risk, you're putting and selected controls and procedures by implementing and maintaining them, regularly assessing the effectiveness of controls and making adjustments as needed. So we have access controls, awareness and training, audit and accountability, configuration management, identification and auth authentication. The first with access control, these are the controls for ensuring that only authorized individuals have access to systems and data. Your awareness and training controls are for educating employees about security risk and best practices. While the auditing and accountability, these track the user's activity and maintain audit logs. Your configuration management is there to ensure that systems and software are properly configured. And finally, identification and authentication are there to verify the identity of your users. So some benefits of NIST 853. You have consistency. It provides a consistent framework for managing your security risk across your organization. It enables effectiveness. It helps ensure that controls are effective in mitigating the risk to your organization. You also meet federal and other government entities compliance requirements and challenges. This is resource intensive. Implementing this requires significant resources such as personnel and or budget. The framework can be complex to implement, particularly for small organizations. Ongoing monitoring is required to ensure that the controls maintain 
effectively. Next, let's identify and evaluate our threats. Assets are anything that is valuable to your organization, including people, systems, data, facilities, or any intellectual property. An example of an asset would be your human capital, your employees, your contractors, your physical assets, such as your building, your equipment, and other inventory. Intellectual property are your patents, your copyrights, and your trademarks. And then digital assets are your websites, your databases, and the applications. Additionally, there's financial assets. It's the cash you have, your investments, and your AR, your accounts receivable. When identifying threats, we have to understand the organization's assets. There's human-based threats, cyber attacks, and insider risk. Environmental threats, natural disasters, power outages, hurricanes, operational risk. This is your equipment failures, your supply chain disruptions. The financial threats, this is economic downturn, market fluctuations, or a new product that disrupts. Identifying your vulnerabilities. Vulnerabilities are the weaknesses and gaps in your organization's defenses that can be exploited by threats. The technical vulnerabilities are outdated software or unpatched systems. Procedural vulnerabilities are poor policies or inadequate training. Your physical vulnerabilities are unlocked doors, an unsecured data center, or you leaving keys laying around for the adversary to access. You need to evaluate your threats and your vulnerabilities by using a risk assessment framework such as NIST 853. This allows for a systematic approach to identifying and evaluating threats and vulnerabilities. First, identify your assets. Next, identify the threats and vulnerabilities, then assess the likelihood of each of the threats, assess the potential impact of each vulnerability. And finally, prioritize the risks to your organization based on the likelihood and potential impact. I briefly mentioned, have a risk metrics. It's a simple way to visualize your risk. A matrix can plot the likelihood of a threat against the potential impact. An example is a low likelihood and a low impact would be green. A medium likelihood and a medium impact would be yellow. And then a high likelihood and a high impact would be a red. This gives you a heat map that you can share with your leadership to understand the risk to your organizations. Next, we need proactive mitigation strategies. We need to identify and remediate vulnerabilities in a proactive manner that can prevent data breaches, reduce the attack surface, and maintain compliance with regulatory requirements. First, scanning. Regularly scanning for new vulnerabilities using tools like vulnerability scanners or pen testing is important to proactively mitigate your risk. Additionally, apply patches in a timely manner to address the identified vulnerabilities. Pay attention to notifications from your vendor, CVEs that are released, or other security bulletins that are posted in the community to know about these vulnerabilities. Remediation. Address the vulnerabilities through actions such as configuration changes, updates, maintenance, and other key fixes to your systems. Scanning. We have host-based scanning. This is agent-based. This is where you deploy an agent and allow it to scan from the inside out. Network-based scanning. This is your network vulnerability scanning, such as your Qualys, your Tenables, that are scanning from the edge, either authenticated or unauthenticated, looking for known vulnerabilities. Application scanning. This would be your burp suites and other tools that are scanning for OS top 10 vulnerabilities. The benefits of regular scanning can help identify vulnerabilities before they are exploited reducing your attack surface, and ensuring compliance with regulatory requirements. Challenges though. Identifying genuine vulnerabilities among the false positives require careful analysis and verification. Most organizations have limited resources. Scanning may require significant resources, such as personnel, hardware, and software, which may not be available to smaller organizations or organizations on a budget that is tightly controlled. Patching. It's imperative that we apply timely patches to prevent exploitations from a, for the identified vulnerabilities that we've been discussing. Critical patching, also known as zero-day patching, 
are there to address vulnerabilities that are in the wild and now need to be attached in your environment. Deploy regular maintenance releases. These are updates that are pushed out, such as Patch Tuesday from Microsoft, Adobe, and Oracle, but also scheduled maintenance patches that come from your vendors who are fixing software and security bugs that may come out monthly, quarterly, or even weekly in some cases. Additionally, ensure you've got feature enhancements through these patches by adding the new features and functionality to protect your organization. There's benefits to patching. Regular patching can maintain system security, prevent data breaches, and ensure compliance with your regulatory requirements. Challenges are always involved in this. There's delayed deployments. Delays in deploying patches can leave systems vulnerable to exploitation. Compatibility issues. Patches may conflict with other software configurations in your environment, so it's important to test quickly and safely in lower environments before pushing to your entire environment. Lastly, remediation. You need to address vulnerabilities through remedial actions such as configuration changes, updates, and fixes, such as configuration hardening, disabling unnecessary services, ports, protocols on your infrication, turning off features that you're not using in your applications or uninstalling them, doing code reviews and updates, implementing additional security controls to have a depth and defense through firewalls, intrusion detection, endpoint detection and response. All of these give benefits to help with regular remediation by maintaining system security, helping prevent data breaches while ensuring you are compliant with your regulatory needs. Lastly, as always, remediation is timely and sometimes may require additional resources you do not have. You may not have the personnel bandwidth to properly remediate issues, so you may need to request additional budget. You may be lacking hardware or software to perform the remediations or the skill sets to use that software. Next, integrating your risk and vulnerability into your security posture. A risk assessment is a systematic approach to identifying, analyzing, and prioritizing potential risks to your organization's assets, data, and operation. Risk identification is identifying potential threats, vulnerabilities, and the likelihood, where risk analysis is assessing the potential impact and likelihood of each risk. Prioritization is determining which risk to address first based on a priority score. It's important that organizations allocate resources effectively, prioritizing their security efforts, and make informed decisions about risk mitigation strategies. Vulnerability management. It's a process to identify, classify, and remediate vulnerabilities in your organization's assets, systems, and applications. Vulnerability identification is using tools and techniques to discover the vulnerabilities, then categorizing the vulnerabilities based on their severity and priority classification. The remediation is addressing those vulnerabilities with patches, updates, or other hardening to fix the issues. It's imperative that you have regular scans for new vulnerability and ensure that they are addressed in a timely manner through continuous monitoring. Many organizations can reduce their attack surface, prevent data breaches, and ensure compliance by implementing a robust vulnerability scanning process and management. Your security controls. These are there to measure and detect to help with prevention, detection, and response for security threats. Your preventative controls, your firewall, your access controls, your detective controls, the intrusion detection system, and log monitoring. Corrective controls, incident response plans, disaster recovery plans, and procedures. By ensuring your security controls are properly implemented and functional, you have effectiveness. Optimizing the use of resources to implement and maintain security calls, security controls is your efficiency. Adapting security controls to meet ongoing organizational needs, that's being scalable. Continuous monitoring. This is the ongoing process to monitor an organization's security posture, identify potential risk, and respond to security incidents. You can do this with your security information and event management, your SIM, continuous vulnerability scans and remediation, running those qualuses, those tenables, those burp scans, 
regularly running security audits and risk assessments, making sure you have the controls in place that you say via your policies, having a pen test performed or an assessment by a third party, practicing your incident response plans and execution through tabletops. Organizations stay ahead of emerging threats and ensure their compliance requirements and maintain a strong security posture when they have continuous monitoring in place. So thank you for your time and I'll leave you with a quote. Risk is not the existence of a vulnerability, but rather the likelihood of its exploitation. This quote emphasizes that having vulnerability doesn't necessarily mean you have a high risk situation. It's the probability an attacker's taking advantage of the vulnerability that matters. You can use this quote to illustrate the difference between risk and vulnerability in your day jobs when you're meeting with your exec executives. For example, explain a vulnerability is a known flaw or weakness in a system, where a risk is the likelihood of an attacker exploiting that vulnerability to cause harm. This is a critical distinction to understand in the concept of risk management and can be used to justify invest investments in mitigating vulnerabilities before they become actual risk. Hope you enjoyed this presentation. Please like and subscribe.